367 miles, the total distance of coastline in Texas. But behind our beaches are giant ocean-like bays of water, creating an additional 3,000 miles of bayfront shoreline, our hidden coast behind the coast. It's a place of sun, salt, serenity, and some of our best beach towns that just so happen to not be on the beach. Bienvenidos a Port Isabel, which is English for Wait, that's Spanish. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> This episode was made for y'all with the help of our awesome partners. Check the caption for more info. At the bottom of Texas, you'll find Port Isabel, about three miles inland from South Padre. All right, so here we are in salty and sunny Port Isabel, which is actually one of the oldest towns down here at the southern tip of Texas. I mean, the history goes back centuries, all the way to the days of the pirates, who they believe dug some fresh water wells in the area. Fast forward to French monks, civil war blockade, hurricanes, all the way up to us. Not that it's particularly historic that we're visiting, but we are very much partaking in modern Port Isabel, where they're still looking for treasure, just the kind that comes out of tourist pockets. In the spring and summer, it's the beachgoers of South Padre Island. In the cold months, it's the winter Texans migrating from up north meaning that any time of year, you'll find a mix of people from all over the country congregating right here in Port Isabel. But despite the constant flux of people, there is a group of salt seasoned locals holding down the town. And one of Port Isabel's oldest institutions that's a staple for locals and tourists alike is Manuel's. And it just so happens to be time for breakfast. For decades, Manuel's has been the preferred way to start every tripper's day. Here's owner, Manuel Borosco. I'm gonna ask the first question. Where did your design inspiration come from? <laughs> hey, you this know, place I'm, is great. I'm crazy. Whatever comes in my mind, I put it up. I'm a little worried you might be a Redskins fan, though. You know, I am. What? And that's where all these uh, banners started. And then everybody, hey, how come you don't you have You can't have just a Redskins. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Especially the Cowboys. Yo, they said, well, that's me right here, so. <laughs> and then they start putting money. I saw that. They put the name, the date. <laughs> I guess if times ever get too hard. That's my retirement fund. <laughs> Manuel's customers take care of him because he's always taking care of them. Making a trip to Manuel's feel more like stepping into the home of an old friend. Year in, year out, we see the same people come back. And it's always great to see him walk in. Manuel, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's familia yeah. at this it, point, it, right? We, we try to make him feel like family. Yeah. And to me, my son, they're family. Perhaps the only thing bigger than Manuel's hospitality are his homemade tortillas. Blanket-sized creations that he fills to the point of overflowing with anything and everything. One reason, he calls them the contoro, Spanish for with everything. Okay, so tell me about the contoro, because that's kind of a legendary taco. Start off with a, just a, a lunch contoro. Uh, people start, uh, hey, can you add this to my bacon and egg taco? Can you add this and that? Sure. sure. We can do whatever you want. <laughs> on the tortilla, you end up with what, about six eggs on it or something? Something like that. Again, going back to the spring breaker, especially when they're drinking, they, they eat anything. <laughs> you said it, not me, it's true. <laughs> well, I'm a man who tries to appreciate everything in life. So why not start this day with my own contoro? Oh, all right, here it is. I got the contoro, <laughs> one taco. And just to show you how big the tortilla is, I got an extra. <laughs> Look at this. I always said, you know, just one breakfast taco is not quite enough. You know, you need two to really fill yourself up. No, I don't think that applies. Go back to one. Yeah, I don't think this, that applies with this. It's got eggs, chorizo, beans, potatoes, and cheese. What do you do, man? Do you go into the middle? Like, you start folding it in. But at that point, it's no longer a taco. It's a burrito, you right? start curling. Oh, curling yeah, from here? Uh, yeah. We're going to fold it like, like that, like a more traditional burrito. 
Oh, I like it. I like it a lot. When you put a delicious breakfast taco on a homemade tortilla, it goes to another level. It goes to Taco Nirvana, somewhere up near there. Oh, man. That is good. You're look at that. You're messy. It's all over. I've, I've clearly done this wrong. I made a terrible mistake. I don't know how I'm going to finish it all, but I'm going to try. I want to see where this goes. I, I want to I wanna go all the way down. Mm. Oh, is it more coffee? Oh, sure, please. Thank you. Mm. Everyone's getting coffee yeah, now? Oh, everyone's getting coffee. Greg's getting coffee. I'll take some of this coffee. Oh, my, oh, oh my Todd's God. getting coffee. Oh, you need the caffeine to counteract the taco. Breakfast food's supposed to be what you eat to kind of get the day going, you know, and like get energized for the day. But with a taco like this, it's like a Thanksgiving feast. You just go take a nap and watch some football. <laughs>
highlighting the ill-fated trip of four Spanish ships in 1554 as they shipwrecked on the Texas coast, and including some real cool artifacts, like this 450-year-old musket recovered from the wreckage and preserved here in this aquarium. Now, it might be weird to say that a shipwreck museum is getting me excited to go out on the water, but hey, I'm weird like that. And I'm ready to go out in search of the most abundant treasure in these waters, fish. You know, I don't think there are any hurricanes in the forecast today, although it does seem like there may be stormy seas ahead. Man, I don't know, do fish bite more when it's raining like this or less? I don't know. I don't think the fish bite. I mean, it's rain, all rain, wet, right? right? You know, yeah, you're you're a no, you might be. <laughs> I might be about to. <laughs> nah, I have a feeling it's going to break just in time. We now interrupt this programming to remind you to like and subscribe. Now back to the road. As they say, if you don't like the weather in Texas, wait five minutes. And I think that's definitely true today. We're heading out with local guide Eddie Curry, who's been fishing these waters ever since he was a kid. In the world of bay fishing, Laguna Madre is world class. One thing that makes it so unique is that it's one of only a few hypersaline lagoons in the world. There's little or no freshwater input, making the water here saltier than the ocean. The fact that anything lives in the water is a wonder. The fact that it's so plentiful is a natural miracle. The water is really shallow here. It's, you know, foot and a half, two feet deep at the most, but you've got these little channels. Okay, the water's two feet deep, this whole bay? The average depth's two and a half feet. Wow. So, see, it's, it's this deep right here. So, that's nothing. So all the bay fish are gonna be right along the edge of that grass. We're stopping in at one of Eddie's honey holes. I love fishing with the professional guide. In 10 minutes, they can save you from a lifetime's worth of miserable guessing. It's gonna be about right, right there. That's about how far the edge is, okay? Okay. You're gonna feel some little taps. Just keep on going. All right, so Eddie, what's the, uh, what's the target out here? What's the prime thing we're looking for? So we're looking for redfish right now. Some of the biggest redfish in the world are in these waters right here, aren't they? Well, we had some this year, uh, 46 and 48 inches long. I, I didn't catch one that big, but some of the other guys did. But uh, Wow. Uh, so and if it's not red, what else? So uh, redfish, Trout and flounders are the big three that we're looking for. Got it. And if you catch all three and a snook in the same day, well, you got the Laguna Madre Grand Slam. Well, a lot of it has to do with the weather there's one right there. Oh, and then I cast the real one. Oh, right hey. Hey, there's one. That's not much, but. Nah. <laughs> fish. Hey, that's a, one. A fish is a fish. A fish right? is a fish. I mean, this is. We'll that, she's not a keeper. Yeah, yeah we'll throw it, it back. They need to be 15 inches. Lucky long. day. Get, go out there and get a little bigger, all right? Yeah, that's promising, though, on the third or fourth cast. That was a trout, and we just may be in a school of them. There we go. Uh oh. I got one. Right, you got the net. Oh, he's not a monster. Oh, nice. But he's a fish. He's pretty close. <laughs> What's our size? Um, 15 inches is the minimum, one over 25. This was not quite 25. But. Yeah, <laughs> I would say so. I could, I'll go measure him. Yeah, 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 let's go. He's close. You gonna make 15? <laughs> I'm gonna throw this back. He's a legal yeah. fish. Nah, let's nah, let's let him, let him get a little bigger. I'm fine with that. Time. All right. Ah, be free. It was pretty fish. It was, it was yeah, pretty, it was yeah. pretty. Yeah. Beautiful. As they say, there's plenty of fish in the bay. They say that, right? You know, bay fishing is my favorite kind of fishing and definitely the perfect setting for any skill level. I take a lot of people out, there's a lot of families, so it's, you know, they get to spend time, so it can be mom and dad. We take a lot of moms and daughters now, which is pretty neat, but That's cool. I used to take one guy and he didn't fish. He said, I've been in my office for 50 straight weeks. He said, I'm going to sit here and watch the clouds blow by you and knock yourself out. <laughs> but you know, that's what he wanted. You know? you know? You know what attracts the people to fishing? It's maybe not the fishing, it's the time on the water. It's unlike a river or a lake where you can see the shore. And at times, it seems endless in every direction, reminding us all that in the grand scheme of things, we're all just small fish in a very large pond. But speaking of fish, I got one. Up, up high, hold up high. There we go, that's the one we're looking for right there. There we go. That's a pretty red. Yeah. He just lifts straight up and he said, come right to me. There we go. <laughs> oh, right. oh yeah, that's a thrill. 
Yeah. Well, how big is he? I'm, I'm saying 22. 22. Yeah. I guess 22 is 22 and a quarter. Quarter. Yeah. Hey. There you go. You want to hold him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, when you drop him, drop him in the boat, in, in right? <laughs> So, hold underneath here. Hey. And once you find the fish, well, they keep biting. There we go. There you go. Up high. Up high. What the heck? <laughs> you know, it's an exciting thing to hook a Texas Red. And just because you can keep a fish, well, that doesn't mean you should. It's very important that we all do our part to keep this bay healthy for both the wildlife and everyone who comes out to enjoy it. The bay makes a great place to see the native animals. However, if you really want to see some truly breathtaking stuff in one of the most diverse habitats in all of Texas, well then look no further than the Laguna Atascosa National Wildlife Refuge just north of town. Comprised of 98,000 acres of federally protected wilderness, this refuge is home to over 400 bird species, including the Alpamata falcon that was once extinct in the United States. It's also the only place in the U.S. where lucky visitors might lay eyes on an endangered ocelot. And the best way to take it all in is on a bus tour with guide James Alexander. All right, so we're heading out. We are heading out. If you think about things on the you gotta go to list, this is right. one of the coolest places on the planet. And it's our pleasure to have a chance to show it to you today. That's awesome. Yeah. Fantastic. There now, is. now, what is the uh, one in chance of seeing a ocelot. If we see an ocelot, <laughs> you're going to be more famous than you are now. No. Okay. We'll have all the network camera <laughs> crews coming down okay. here. No, be, be honest with you, you know, we have 100,000 acres in the four units that make this place up. We have research going on and tracking. We can only confirm that there are 12 ocelots here. Wow. So well on the way to extinction. Wow. We're doing everything we can to put the brakes on, a lot of cool stuff, but it's a challenge. Yeah, it really yeah, yeah. is. Okay, so we're unlikely on the ocelots, but trust me, there's plenty out here to make it worth the trip. First stop, the Laguna itself. All right, well this is our largest freshwater lake. It's called Laguna Atascosa. Yeah. And I bet you wonder what Atascosa means. Yeah, yeah, I got no <laughs> idea, yeah. yeah. The Spanish, when they came here, when they were walking along the edges of this, they got up to almost to their knees. So they call it Atascosa sticky mud. So this whole area, you stay on the track when you're driving around this area. Okay. Well, so is this a natural lake? Oh, it sure is. Yep, 5,000 acres. And when migratory birds come, this is usually the first place they go. They come in here, they get a drink, they rest, and then they start looking for food. I know Caddo Lake often gets billed as the only natural lake in Texas. I've even said that on this show. However, this Laguna proves that one is a Texas-sized myth. All right, well, we are lucky. A day like today, I didn't expect it, but you see right straight out, there's an alligator. Sure oh is. my gosh, that is one. Handsome devil, isn't he? Oh, he's beautiful. <laughs> so handsome. An alligator. It's not an alligator. I guy. like it. I know. <laughs> Without a doubt, the main showstopper here are the birds, all 427 species of them, and it takes no time to spot them. Yeah, yeah. there he is. He's a, he looks like a white-tailed kite. From a distance, he looks, looks like a gull, and you look a little closer, like, no, 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 that ain't a gull. Oh, man, he's, he's masked, like a little masked yeah. bandit. Beautiful. Kites. That's not something you see all, often. Well, you know, this is the premier birding spot in all of Texas. All of Texas. <laughs> hey, what's this guy on the top of that tree right there? That little guy? Mockingbird. Mockingbird, you got him. Not exactly rare, but totally appropriate that the state bird of Texas would make an appearance on the show. But it's not just the skies that you have to keep an eye on. Hey, look over here. What's this? I think we've got, uh, what, three or four hogs, maybe more? Oh, Straight yeah, down yeah, here? yeah, yeah. Oh, that's cool. So just feral hogs? Yeah, feral hogs. Destructive suckers, but they're still fun to see. A little bit of everything out here. I told you. <laughs> right. This is a trip to Laguna Atascosa. A couple hours spent scanning the brush, waiting for the next great discovery of nature to reveal itself. Yeah, look out over here, Ted. Okay. Can you, can you see him on the ground? That's that northern harrier we were talking about. Oh, cool. Yeah. Really cool. Another beautiful bird. Yeah, he's sitting there scoping, looking for mice or something, huh? Yeah. Yep, there he goes. There hey, he flew away. <laughs> I'm, I'm amazed at the number of raptors out. Oh, yeah. Isn't it sweet? Yeah, yeah. incredible. And this is a slow day. 
<laughs> Man, I'm scared of what this place looks like on a good day. Laguna Atascosa is truly something special, and I'm so thankful that it will be here for a very long time. Okay, so one of the early naturalists who kind of explored the Great West, he was obsessed with documenting all the birds of North America. So he would document their size, their color, but also how they tasted. <laughs> like, so oh, everyone yeah. he saw, he'd kill them and eat them. Be like, oh yes, tastes quite like a, a mockingbird. The cardinal tastes surprisingly similar to the green jay. Yeah. It just right, got like, boring at the end because they all tasted the same. Yeah, like, chicken. like chicken. And then they all went back to chicken. All went back to chicken. Out of respect for the many birds of the sky, we'll eat something from the sea instead for dinner as we head to Los Tortugos. Spanish for the turtles, you won't find any of that on the menu. But what you will find is a tasty collection of seafood dishes made as fresh as seafood comes. Oh, sweet. I mean, this really is a market. Check it out. Fresh caught shrimp, blue crabs, squid, or as fancy people call it, calamari. You know the seafood's gonna be super fresh when they have the fresh seafood counter right at the door, like this. Oh, I'm excited. Owner Jose Cuevas spent years in the shrimping business out at sea, but then decided to start cooking it instead of catching it, allowing him to spend more time with his family, including his daughter, Ana Garcia, who before she knew it, was hooked into the family business. So is this place more market or more restaurant? Um, it's a little bit of both. Actually, it's more of a restaurant than the market. We actually started um, with ceviches and cocktails, and I really didn't know anything about seafood at all. So <laughs> little by little, I started learning. <laughs> That's cool. So tell me about the ceviches. I mean, it's kind of famous. Yes, it's actually uh, my grandma's recipe passed on. So the only people that do it here is my mom, my aunt, and my dad. That's it. It's. So y'all won't even train new employees mm -hmm. on how to make the ceviche? No, sir. <laughs> Just whisper it real fast. No. <laughs> oh. Wait, and you weren't even on that list. So you don't even know how to make the no, ceviche. No, I don't. Well, so they ask me sometimes, how do you make it? And I'm like, oh, no. I, I don't, don't even know. So you couldn't even give the secret away if you wanted. No. Ah, that's awesome. No. That's cool. <laughs> ceviche is a delicious concoction of raw fish that's been cured in lime juice and mixed with other vegetables and spices. But for those of you who like their fish cooked in a more traditional sense, well, they do that here, too. Now, I did catch a fish this afternoon but I donated it back to the captain. Do you cook people's catch yes, as we well? Do. You can either have it grilled, blackened, okay. fried, or... That's cool. I caught a redfish today that was... How big? It was like... Uh -huh. uh, how, how big? I'm not okay, gonna zoom out that much. But as long no, as it's filet. Yeah, as long know. as it's filet. Oh, he was talking it. about the size of the filets. <laughs> That's a... Thank you, Daniel. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah, I yes. saw it. I saw it. So I can't cook my own catch today, but that's not gonna stop me from eating what they've already caught for me. All right, time for the appetizer. Some of Grandma's ceviche. Three different kinds of mariscos. We've got some fish, some shrimp, and some squid. Oh, it's delicious. When it's done right, you know, it's like this, this tart punch of citrus to the face. Got all that flavor of like a pico de gallo. And then all the fresh flavors of the seafood. Man, if I live down here by the coast, I might eat ceviche every day of my life. Woo! Woo! Thank you. I did the uh, the old day tripper classic. Order too much food. Never done that one before. No. It's <laughs> All right. Four tacos, two fish, two shrimp, fresh avocado on top. Mmm. That's incredible. Can I tell you that blackened seasoning? That is awesome. This right here is one of the reasons I love making episodes on the coast. We're also so close to Mexico, so you get the fresh seafood, you get the Mexican influence. And the result is just magic, my friends. Magic. That's delicious. You know, many Texans have traveled through Port Isabel, but now you've got reasons to travel to Port Isabel. A vibrant place where the tacos are as big as the fish and the animal life as plentiful as the history. No matter the season or even if the sun is shining and as sure as the sea is salty, well, there's always a great trip awaiting Port Isabel. From down here at the bottom of Texas, Vaya con Dios, amigos.
Howdy, y'all. Follow along with my adventures at Chet Tripper on Instagram and at the Day Tripper TV on Facebook and YouTube. Or head to thedaytripper.com for travel guides, past episodes, and info on our mobile app and Team Day Tripper. This episode was made for y'all with the help of our awesome partners. Check the caption for more info. Howdy, y'all. Chet the Day Tripper here. Thanks so much for tripping with us. Uh, remember, while you're here, like this video, subscribe to our channel so that we can stay out there on the road and keep on tripping. <laughs> Did we miss anything in this town? Leave us a comment, let us know. We love finding out about new stops with all of your tips. And if you love Epic Texas Day Trips, remember to check our channel. We got a lot of them on there. Also, don't forget, if you want some sweet Day Tripper merch or another cool Texas made product, Come see us in Georgetown at the Day Tripper World Headquarters. You can also shop online if you check the link down there in the caption. All right, y'all. Bye, Condios, amigas.